Now to England's task against tiny San Marino. They needed to win by seven goals, of course, and hope that Poland could do a job on Holland. England tonight, watched by John Motson. England in red, San Marino in blue. England needing to win by a seven-goal margin and hope that Poland can do them a favour in Poznan against Holland. I'm sure you're aware now of what's at stake. And Bachocki, number nine, picks the ball up straight away and San Marino launched the first attack. Oh, and a mistake by Stuart Pearce and San Marino had scored! I don't believe this. Stuart Pearce tried to pass the ball back to David Seaman. Galtieri, extraordinary start. Forward by Ince. Here he is again. And it's Ince who shoots, and England equalise. Paul Ince scores, and England's faces a little less red now, perhaps. Picking the ball up in midfield, Bonini was appealing to the referee. Ince had the shot, and it beat Benedettini low down by his left hand. And now, goalkeeper Benedettini comes right out to meet uh, Ferdinand, headed back by Ripley. This may be a chance for David Platt. Oh, and the goalkeeper's missed it, and it's been put in. Ian Wright. And England lead 2-1. Goalkeeper in a terrible mess here. Forward by Platt. There's Ferdinand. Did he get a touch? Doesn't matter now, it's going to be another one. Ferdinand does get a touch. And England lead 3-1. It fell nicely the second time for him. And England have gone into a 3-1 lead. England now playing right to left. Ferdinand, number nine. Right in the centre, being joined by Rip. It's a good ball, there's right. And it's in. England go 4-1 up. And suddenly, the hopes rise. Ian Wright gets his second... There's Walker coming forward for England, chips it up. Les Ferdinand on this side, he's onside, a chance for England here. Ferdinand goes round his man, squares it, and that's a goal. It's Paul Ince again. Paul Ince has made it five for England, 5-1. This was Ferdinand again in the role of provider. The long cross picks him out, got it down nicely, went round the defender, and Ince is the player who comes in to slide it into the net. His second and England's fifth. This is Pallister. Oh, and yes, it's in, and it's Wright's hat-trick. Wright's hat-trick making it 6-1 to England. And it's flicked on here by Ferdinand, and Wright finishes it off. And good ball. And a chance, perhaps, for England to make it seven, and they have. Ian Wright again. Wright scores his fourth goal. Good personal performance by him, certainly, but uh, only a saving grace in a way for the England supporters, because even if England scored another one and made it eight, it's to no avail because Holland have won. But here's Ian Wright of Arsenal, who's found it so hard, it seemed to score goals for England, getting his fourth and equaling David Platt's performance against San Marino at home. No, I mean, I shall be in discussion with officials of the Football Association, as we have been on various aspects over the period of my managership. And what I steadfastly refuse to do is to fuel any of the uh, speculation from comments that I might be making. That is a private thing for the Football Association officials and myself to talk about. You won't be resigning? It, it doesn't matter whether I'll be resigning or not at this particular stage, because the first thing we have to do is discuss the whole situation with officials of the Football Association. His contract ends uh, next July, uh, obviously we'll be talking to him. There's no need to rush, we, we, there's no pressing urgency about it. What we must do is get it right. So there will be no immediate decision? Not as far as the FA is concerned, we will wait to see what Graham wants to, wants to say to us within the course of the next, say, weeks, n n not, not days, certainly not days. There'll be no imminent decision. We only managed to take one point off both teams, the teams that qualified, and I suppose if you, if you look at it that way, then yeah, the Dutch and the Norwegians deserve to qualify, and we didn't. Um, we can look at turning points. For me, the biggest turning point was Holland at home, because effectively we would have put Holland out if we'd have managed to hold on to that uh, lead, and we didn't do. We lost out on the two-game series to Norway and Holland, and that's why we're not going. But what are the lessons of that? 
Well, I mean, people will always be looking for lessons for this and lessons for that, and it's always, I think, a very dangerous thing. At the present time, when it, after the Rotterdam defeat, it looked as if uh, we would be struggling to qualify. I mean, the hysteria that's following, simply that about everything that's supposed to be wrong with football, everything that's supposed to be wrong with the game. I don't want to enter into those public discussions at the present time because emotion just takes, it just takes over. And I've also noted with interest, you know, some of the comments that are being made, and I've said previously, and I say again, you really have to work hard as what is being said for the good of the game or for self-interest. What I would like you to be asking is, is ask everybody within the game, managers, chairman, whoever, hand on heart, have they done everything within their power? Have they done everything possible over the last few years to help the cause of the England team? I suspect, David, you will find uh, that the, the, the number that can say yes will be relatively small. I think we've all got to get behind the England team. We've got to submerge our differences within the game, players, managers, powerful club chairman, and say, look, this is where we want English football to be. Let's get the structure right with the management of the team and let's get behind them. Have you had a worse moment in football than this? Well, I mean, of course you don't, because the point is that you, everybody with any ambition wants to reach the very top of his profession. And when he gets there, he wants to be successful. And whatever the odds are against you know, doing that, it still um, isn't very nice when that's not actually achieved. Um, and, of course, it's a very, very... I say low moment, it, it, it is a low moment and it's a hurtful one. But, um, you know, it, it's a question that you've got to show a great deal of mental toughness and I think I'm quite capable of doing that. David Davis conducting those interviews in Bologna tonight and confirmation that Holland qualified tonight along with Norway who had already qualified. Now, Jim, what are we to make about all this? Of course, as has been said in those interviews, England lost it a long time ago and they lost it at Wembley. I mean, mm. they weren't going to qualify tonight or it was a long shot, wasn't it? Yes, it was indeed. And, and it, it wasn't really on. I mean, uh, <clears throat> it could have happened. It might have been a miracle. But uh, even that, even if England had struggled through tonight, it wouldn't have altered what we have seen in the matches in which they played to qualify. It wouldn't altered the number of outstanding players English players that our league is producing and has produced at the moment, the number of cultured players. You mean there aren't enough of them? Yeah. The, yeah, I mean, Gaza wasn't there. Uh, you look at the difference in structure tonight of some of the teams we've seen, the Romanian Hang team from top to the bottom. The Republic of Ireland have qualified for the World Cup finals using similar players who play yes, in the English have. league, many yes, of whom wouldn't get in the England squad. Right. Um, now we go back into a tactical thing, which is another argument altogether. Jackie has been happy to use the style of football that has been successful for lots of managers and clubs in the English League and play it internationally. He's not tried to compromise. Uh, Graham Taylor, has been, I think, has been caught between the two things. Maybe a fundamental believer in a long ball game, but also under pressure to produce a kind of stylish football that, apart from one or two clubs, we don't see every week in this country. So. Um, Whatever you do about the England manager, unless you get that breeding ground right, uh, that whatever manager it is, he's going to have the same problems. It isn't just a matter of playing less games. This but is the a, system's been the, same for, be long, system's been the yeah. same for a long time. And four years ago, three and a half years ago, Bobby Robson got England to the, the semi-finals, very nearly to the final. Alf Ramsey won the World <coughs> Cup with an England team. The league was in much the same state as it is now, Terry. I mean. Have things changed that much? Is um, it now impossible to run an England team? No, I don't think it is. I, I think that uh, uh, Bobby Robson's side that got to the semi-final, I, th I think, was a particularly good group of, of guys. And if anything, I think Graham might... And they had some luck. Well, of course, you've got to have some luck as well, especially when it's a, a knockout competition. You know, you don't get too many second chances. But uh, people like Beardsley and uh, Brian Robson and Waddle, and I, I think Graham himself would say perhaps it might have you know, discarded those a little early because you look at the teams that's playing, you look at Holland, you look at Koeman and Reichard, Gullit, Van Busten, these guys are all experienced players. It's a shame sometimes to lose what they've got mm. and you're going to, and, and the younger guys can only gain from the experience that they've got. What about Graham Kelly's point made in the interview there that the clubs don't help the situation at all? I mean, what do you think about that, I Jeff? think that's absolutely right. And, and if you ask Terry about Spain, he would tell you that the clubs there, the, the big clubs, are totally selfish and that the Spanish team no is, 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 is no different there. Yeah, but uh, they've qualified. 
Well, they have, but on the other hand, their record in recent World Cups has been no better or worse than ours. I mean, you could say that Spain should do better. I mean, they do well in European competitions, but don't necessarily win World Cups. Mind you, it's a good tip. We got a good tip for this World Cup. Put your money on Spain. Yeah. I mean, but that's uh, that's you know that comes from the inside, from the two gentlemen <laughs> either side of me here tonight. So I'm going to go out and have a bet when I've finished on that. But um, it isn't, you know. It, it, when you say what can we do about it to make it any different, I come back to my point that the manager is only is going to be as good as the number of quality players that our league produces. Now you mentioned, all right, Bobby Robson did all right. Did Are we, you saying we don't produce did we, let me, did we outplay the Cameroons? Did we outplay Belgium? No, in that's the match why I mentioned one? an element of luck all to right. Terry. Yeah. In, the German, in, the, in the match against Germany, we did play particularly well for one match and happened to have lost it. So, I mean, I don't think those comparisons are relevant and I, uh, uh, and I think we're losing sight of the way in which our young players are produced. Uh, things are happening within the Football Association. For years, Young schoolboys have not been allowed, professional coaches have not been allowed access to them from the age of nine when they're capable of assimilating skills so without, without fear. It's no, but it's not going to be the way from now on. The, th the thing is changing with centres of excellence where at last they'll be in the hands of top class coaches, right. not That's schoolmasters, great for the future. from yeah, the age of nine. That's great for the future. That's great for the future, yeah. yeah. But, but uh, Terry, let me put it to you. Do you think that the players are around in the English league now no if you've got the right manager and the right tactics that you could get success with? I think Graham Kelly's right. The, the more help you can get off clubs and everybody that's in the game, the better it's going to be. Was Spurs helpful to the England team? I think we've always been helpful. I think we've proved that with Lineker and Gascoigne and so on. Hey, I think not to the young England but, lot, uh, you weren't. Are you saying in, the, in, this, in this country we haven't got enough you good weren't players? Helpful to the young I'm asking you a question. Uh, are you saying they're not good enough for, <laughs> to, to compete at the top end of the... Of the market in the, in the I, European and world I, football. I, I, of country. course, we're good enough, and of course, uh, we can make better management of the resources that we have. I mean, any manager, that's his job to do it. Whether you're in the third division, whether you're England's manager, you don't pick your resources, you've got them there, and you make the best of what you've got. Yes. And maybe we haven't made the best of what we've got. Jack has made, you know, on results, got a bit of luck, one point out of four that's in the, the last point. two matches, so we have got but the he's there. He's so, there. So we, have so we can find the players and we can find a manager well, well, if we find I mean, the right players and the right manager. Yeah. So who, uh, how many players have we got? Right players and right manager. The, the measurement of our playing skill is, the, I've said it before, the market for top class players, the biggest market is in Italy. How many England players are playing in Italy at the moment? Uh, compared wow. with how many Germans, how many Dutchmen, you know, how many Romanians? W w the market shows the strength of the talent that we're producing in this country and we've got to teach young players to control a football, be happy in possession of it, in the years where results don't matter. By the time the professional coach, coaches have had hold of players in the past, immediately they're in a league where they've got to win. So they don't make mistakes. So you don't hold the ball in your own penalty area. You get it away. The newspapers tell me that nobody wants the England manager's job. Now, supposing Graham Taylor resigns or is sacked or whatever happens to mm. him, maybe he'll continue. Who knows? We mm. don't know yet. Um, do you go along with that, or do you think there are people out there in your profession, or perhaps your ex-profession, yeah. who, um, for the moment, <laughs> for the moment, who who would take the job, who would want the job, and who would be good, reasonably good at the job, bearing in mind perhaps the limitation of players I and think, perhaps the immense uh, pressure from the press. I think I think it's changed a lot. I think there was a time not too far, not too long ago, where uh, if, if this job came up, everybody would be gra grasping at it. But uh, I think including it's, it's, you, probably everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I think now it's not as attractive as what it was. And I think most guys that have been tipped, and I would say that ninety percent of them will not want the job. You were always tipped, but you haven't been tipped lately. I'm resting. I'm enjoying myself at yeah. last. Yeah. <laughs> would you take it? Would, would it be a job that would interest you? Supposing I, all things were equal. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit on the fence. <laughs> That's a dangerous <laughs> place to Any, sit. Anybody who is intelligent enough, uh, you know, to, to not to want the job, you know, or, or is intelligent enough to take it, if you see what I mean. No. Uh, no, you no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you've got we'll that much, that. if you've got that much intelligence, you don't take it. <laughs> you need some intelligence to work that out. <laughs> Leave it with me. Well, <laughs> I'd like to make things difficult for you, sitting in that chair, you smiling have, away you like have that. Always done so. We're all we're all trying to be happy on a night actually where we feel very very sad about the World Cup. Exactly because right. It is it is a case yeah. of the home international you know countries not qualified. It is only That's football. It. It's it's not war.